nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, take. Welcome to this edition of Off Key. My name is Joel Samuel. It's my privilege to introduce to you Robin Miller. How are you doing today, Robin? Great, Joel. How are you? I'm doing great. Tell me a little bit about your music. You're originally from Detroit? Yeah, I'm originally from Detroit, Michigan. Um, I left Detroit to move out to California in 1979. And um, I play a lot of different kinds of music, actually. I play New Age music, and I play rock and roll, and pop, and basically. And you said you were signed with A&M and they sent you out to California. What was that like? Uh, well, I was in Detroit. Okay? I had never been to California before. This was in 79. And uh, I wasn't signed to A&M. I was just I was, um, uh, called on to do some shows with uh, Tim Curry, who was signed to A&M Records. And uh, I was flown out to LA to do those shows. And it was a real culture shock going from Detroit to LA. <laughs> But it was, it was great. It was a really wonderful, eye opening experience. So, how life. long have you been playing? Since I was seven. I started playing when I was seven years old. I was uh, like some little coming home from visiting my grandmother on her farm in Ohio. And uh, walked into the front door and the house turned on TV set, and there was Elvis Presley you know, on the Insulton Show. And I'm like, oh, I want to do that. <laughs> So I, when I started out too, yeah, it's funny, huh? Elvis was a big influence on me yeah. also. Yeah, so I, I bugged my parents until they bought me this beautiful ten dollar guitar that would be cracking no money, but I just loved it. You, know, you, know, you start playing Elvis songs? Um, actually, I started playing. Um, I learned a couple of the songs that ended up about how I was pretty cool song. <laughs> But then I got sidetracked. I, I uh, started listening to other stuff like Chuck Berry and you know, Johnny Be Good. You know, when it first came out, I really grew out on that record. And, uh, just a lot of different different people that were out at that time, like Ricky Nelson, you know, just did some good stuff and did some cool songs. And uh, then as the years progressed, uh, of course the Beatles came in, and I was really into that. So what was it like growing up in Detroit? Who influenced you there? Well, there was Detroit was a real melting pot of all kinds of music. There was, there was great stuff. There was blues, there was soul, there was rock, jazz, you name it. You know, they had it. And back in those days, the Motown uh, days were really happening. Yeah, you know, and you had all the great black artists, you know, that were doing their thing. And, uh, the radio was just filled with, with uh, great music. So what was your dream when you first started out? Be another Elvis? Or? <laughs> Well, my, my dream when I first started out, I think, was I just really dug in how all the girls were like screaming for them, you know? <laughs> but then after I got into music and I really started playing it and started listening to it and really um, expanding my horizons with what, what, what music is, um, that all sort of like went for the race and I just was really getting into the music and making the music. So you're trying to tell our audience that the birds song, I wanted to say you want to be a rock and roll star, is it correct? <laughs> Actually, that was correct at one time. And it's not correct that much anymore. I mean, um, now I just want to play great music with great people and, and do you know, travel the world. <laughs> so you moved to LA, and then uh, how did you find Sedona in Northern Arizona? Well, I was living in LA. I uh, lived there for 12 years. And I played a lot of different things, did a lot of different, different bands, and um, playing, you name know, it. Um, I just started getting burnt out on, on the scene, on um, how plastic everything was. And how was people mention that a lot. Could you go yeah. into more detail about what you were talking about? Okay, well, um, I had a deal with MCA Records. Uh, and, um, it was supposed to be, a lot of the stuff was supposed to happen with it. You know, I had my hopes you know, suddenly high. You know, and uh, when it didn't come down like, like contracts said it was supposed to come down, uh, they basically shelved the, the project, and, and um, I lost a lot of, I mean, it was very disheartened. I lost a lot of respect for the business and stuff, and, and things. And I saw a lot of stuff going on that I, that I really wasn't crazy about. So, I just decided to just to get into the music and not even think about it for a while, the actual 
business of music. You know? Because that's where it all started for me anyway. It wasn't the business aspect, it was just the joy of playing music, just the joy of doing it. You know? And um, I think the, the industry you know, has changed, it's gone through the changes, and I think it's, hopefully it's coming around now. So your music is really sellable. What do you do that isn't sellable? What kind of music do you enjoy? Oh gosh, I enjoy all kinds of stuff. Um, I like anything that's melodic It makes sense musically, I like. Um, I'm not really into like a lot of the grunge stuff that's happening you know, too much. <laughs> You're not into rap? No, I mean, I'm not crazy. I mean, the beat's great. <laughs> what about jazz? Not, I like jazz. Certain forms of jazz, melodic jazz. I'm not really crazy about um, some of the jazz stuff that I, that I hear that's like here and there and everywhere. The free form. Yeah. I, mean, I like certain aspects of it. But sometimes I feel like there's just a lot of unnecessary notes. <laughs> when, listening, when listening to your music, it seems like it's so put together. It is for sale. Uh, you're writing for that particular audience, very uh, not, sellable. Not really. I, mean, I don't really write for any audience. I just write for myself. How many songs have you written so far? In hundreds. hundreds. Any of them have you sold to anyone else? I sold one to uh, the band Firefall. Um, they uh, did an album called Clouds Across the Sun, uh, RCA. Uh, that's really how I left it in my uh, The song that I sold to them was called Love Ain't What It Seems. Yeah, I put that on. What was that like? Big money? No. No, no, no. Because the album didn't do all that great, um, number one, it had sort of passed by the day, you know, they, they made their mark and they were on their way out, so sort of like, sort of like Spinal Tap. <laughs> um, <coughs> and, um, so I, I, I got some royalty checks in the mail, you know, but they weren't really anything substantial. You know, with this business, it depends on, on the deal that you, that you have uh, with the publishing company, it depends on the deal that you have with the company. And do you with the artist, you know, how much it wants, how much percentage, all that stuff, you know. And if the album sells or not. Now, if that album had gone platinum, I could have stood to make some you know, music money. But then, What are some of the themes that you deal with in your music? Oh, geez, all kinds of stuff. Um, the traditional, like, you know, um, she done me wrong kind of thing. You know. <laughs> if you had a heart. Yeah, right. Kind of thing. That's, that's stuff like that. And also, some, some ideas and concepts, um, like on my album, um, I had to deal with more broader perspectives of life. Like, um, the wheel, which talks about you know, what you do comes back to you. All that you do comes back to you, like you say, you need to be Is that something of your personal philosophy? Yes. So, Moving into a slower lifestyle, how has that improved your music? Well, I don't know how it's improved my music, it's sure improved my headspace. <laughs> I was used to like running at 120 miles an hour, day in, day out, uh, in the city. And um, breathing the smog and sitting behind the wheel on the 405 freeway, and stuck in rush hour traffic, and you know, just dealing with the energy of the city, you know, it was just started getting to me. So I wanted to change. I didn't know what, really what kind of change I was going to you know, really get. Or, or you had no create. idea what it was like here. Well, I had come to visit like once, but I, you know, when you, when you stay for a few days, you don't really get a picture of what it was like. And I think, you know, living in a, in a small town area like Cottonwood like or Sedona or Jerome or something, it's a real trade-off because you have certain things that you don't have to see. But you, you, you don't have certain things that the city has. You know, aspects of you know, culture or nightlife or things that are going on that you just can't you know, get at. You know, that aren't there at your fingertips. Like when I was living in LA, I mean, um, in Westchester, you know, just where I grew up with, I could just hop in the freeway and like 10 minutes be downtown Hollywood or whatever. You know, LA. Get a nightclub here, nightclub there, or do this, do that, stay out all night long, whatever. Did you miss it? In some ways I do. In other ways I don't at all. Because what what has been added to my life through leaving that area, 
coming to a place where I have rediscovered that there are really fine, warm-hearted people, good people, you know, that I never really had the opportunity to meet in the city because maybe it was because of my, my own fast-paced life, um, or maybe it's because in the city that there's a general overall apprehension of going out and meeting people, you know, and opening your heart up and being vulnerable or whatever, you know, to people and stuff. Whereas in this area, or an area like this, I think people are, it's easier to be friendly, it's easier for people to open up and uh, exchange and share. You, know? you don't feel that what you've been going through recently is like a midlife crisis where you're trying to figure out what life's all about, where you're going to go for the next 10 or 20 years? I've had a midlife crisis for all my life, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying to figure out you know, what I'm doing or what life is about for a long time. You know, it was just a little kid. I was always question, question about life. What is the meaning? What's the purpose of doing this or that? You know? What's the purpose of working your whole life away and trying to be a rock star and, and doing this and doing that or whatever, you know, trying to become famous and make it and make a lot of money when you might kick the bucket and leave it all in hand. Maybe it's not going to hit any more. But I've, you know, I've had friends who have died at my age. You know? and, it, and it makes you Look at the priorities in life. What is important to you? you know? Is it so important to make a lot of money? Is it so important to have your face on the cover of magazines? And everything, right? you know? Is it? So where do you want to go now? What's your next move? I just want to make great music. I want to make great music with great people and have a great time. Doing it, you know? And enjoy my life in the moment. And not project what the future is going to be because I don't know what the future is going to be. You know? Except with this album. This album I really feel proud of. You know, I worked hard on it. You know? But whatever happens, I mean, if it goes, it goes, and it doesn't, it doesn't. That's just the way, you know, the business is. I really learned that the hard way. <laughs> you know, when, you, when you are in a business like this, where there's so many variables and so many aspects, you know, and there are no guarantees on any level, you, know, you learn that you don't get your hopes up too high, because if you do, you just open yourself up to you know, the you know, hit the face. The other style of music you say you enjoy so much is New Age. A lot of people that play New Age don't want to be called New Age musicians. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't mind that. Well, it isn't the that, that I don't mind to be called that. I think that people always have a tendency to label everything and stuff. And like, if, if you look at all the music right now, like, there's the rock, there's the pop, there's the New Wave, there's the, the New Age, there's the cycle, a cy cyborg, you know, industrial music or whatever, you know, there is the punk, there's all this, you know, grunge, you know, garage. You can go on and on and on labeling stuff, you know. All I, I like, when I look at the music that I play, which is, what, if you want to call it new age, which is the keyboard instrumental stuff, I look at it just as flowing melodic music that I just get into and have a good time with. I mean, People who are in the New Age movement turn it New Age you know, because I think for a want of a, of a better description or something, I don't know. I mean, music is music. You know. Which crowd do you like better, the rock crowd or the New Age? I like them both. I like, I like it all. It's like people come to me and, and they, they go up to me after seeing me play like the soft, pretty, mellow, New age music, and they see me play this rock and roll, and like dancing on the stage, and screaming, and sweating, <laughs> and having a good time. And they go, well, they're like two different people, and uh, that's great. I, I enjoy that. I enjoy being able to express myself both ways. And I don't really see any either or, like some people might. You know? I don't see it as being um, any, any less than or better than. I see it both as just different forms of expression. Just like I can pick up my acoustic guitar and, and play my acoustic guitar and write uh, a pretty song, uh, a mellow song on that, and I can go my electric guitar and play some blues or some rock, something heavier, you know? Or go to the piano and play something soft and pretty. You know, it's all a part of me. It's all part of, a, of expression, expressing you know, who I am. What is that? I mean, what are you really trying Good to question. say? Good <laughs> question. Who are you? <laughs> yeah, it is a great question. No idea yet. Well, I think I'm, I'm growing, I'm learning, and I'm, and I'm understanding more every day of who I am. I think I'm realizing the priorities of life and what are my priorities of life. 
and they certainly changed over the years, that's for sure. Um, if there's one thing that you could tell the thousands of people that are watching this show that would represent who you are, what would that be? Wow. <laughs> Just, yeah, 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 that's, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a uh, regular guy that's loving his life and loving doing what he's doing. Mm -hmm. And I feel very blessed and honored to be able to have this opportunity, this means to express myself creatively through, through music. Mm -hmm. well, thanks a lot for being a part of the show, Robin. Thank you, Joe. Much success. We'll be looking forward to seeing a lot of you in the future. Thank you. This has been Offbeat. I hope you've enjoyed the show. Please tell your friends about it, and we'll see you on the very next edition of Offbeat. My name is Joel Sabian. Thank you for watching. I look at you and I see your face Captured by the fear Nah, this is not a good day to do this. Right? Yeah. i just been singing for five days in a row. Okay. Let's not, let's not try this. Set the guitar. Well, at least keep it in the shot. That'd okay. Be good.